The cyclist is going around a bank curve at a velocity of 19 meters per second. And the curve is banked at 30 degrees. We want to find out at what distance out, what the radius of this is going to be, so that he has no friction acting on him in a lateral direction. So there's no force of static friction adding on him, acting on him laterally. So the first thing we're going to, we're just going to have to basically sum the forces in each direction. Okay, so what we have to do though is, since this is now acting in, the normal force is acting at an angle, because it acts at the point of contact, per perpendicular to the planes, now weight is not going to equal the normal force. So what we're going to have to do is break this up into components. So I always like to draw this out just so that we understand exactly what's going on with the angles. If this is 30 here, you can look at this big triangle that it makes, 90, 30, this has to be 60 here. This is 60 and this whole thing is 90. This is our 30 degrees in here. So if this is 30 degrees, we're going to be using sine for x and cos for y. Okay, so we want, let's go some of the forces in the x direction is equal to m, acceleration in the x direction forces in the x direction. W is only in the y direction. Normal force in the x direction. Sine theta is going to be opposite, which is our x direction, over hypotenuse, which is our normal force. So, Fn sine 30 degrees is our force in the x direction. And that's acting in the negative direction, because I'm going to define, actually I'll define that as positive, make that positive so that it can just be positive. So our acceleration is acting this way, normal force acting this way, Fn sine 30 equals m. Now acceleration in the x is ac, centripetal acceleration, we know is v squared over r. So instead of ac here, I'm going to put in v squared over r. And we're looking for r, but we don't know the normal force and we don't know the mass. So what we're going to have to do is sum the forces in the y direction to try and figure those out and plug in here. So sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero because there's no acceleration in the y direction. So we can just say that negative weight plus, now there's going to be a positive portion of the normal force and the normal force is going up and we have cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so we can say the cosine of 30, Fn cos 30, and that's our y component here of the normal force, equals zero. So we can solve for, let's say, Fn, okay, we have two equations here, we can say normal force equals, I add the weight over here, then I can divide by cos 30, and that's what Fn is. So now I'm just going to substitute in here. So instead of Fn, I have W over cos 30 times sine 30 equals m v squared over r. Now I know W is equal to mg, so I'm going to plug that in. So I get mg sine 30 all over cos 30 equals mv squared over r. Okay, m's are common on both sides, they can be cancelled out. So I'm left with g sine 30 over cos 30. I'm looking for r, so I'm going to multiply r to this side. And I'm going to leave v squared here. And so I have to multiply cos 30 up here. And divide g sine 30 down here. Okay, now I know all these numbers, so I'll plug them in. v is 19, so I get 19 squared times cos 30. over g, which is 9.8, and sine 30. So my final answer, after I plug that into my calculator, 
is a radius of 63.8 meters.